Hi guys, welcome back to the channel or welcome, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Kyra and on this channel, we just love our makeup. And beyond that, we like to use our makeup, track our makeup, project pan our makeup and play with our makeup and most importantly, use and love what we have. So today I am doing that by way of a get ready with me using all Project Pan makeup. A lot of new things have been rolled in and you know, there's been a lot of movement in projects lately. So I thought I would just take you through this look right here, this stunning green eye look, as well as a new frosty lip to my collection those 90s browns and frosty lips are coming back y'all and i have the perfect recommendation for you today at the end of the video so let's go ahead and get into it all right are we ready for some project pan makeup so i'm gonna start things off with my little mini elf power grip primer i do really like this one i honestly as much as i thought i would don't see a huge difference between this one and the one with niacinamide, but I do know I need some extra hydration on my skin today because of the foundation that we're going to be using is basically self-setting. You do not have to use powder with it, even with my oily skin and like profuse sweating. And the foundation is my Urban Decay Face Bond. I have the shade 12 Light Neutral. I'm gonna give it a good shake. I really have only used this a handful of times, which is why it is now in my Project 10 Uses, because I kind of wanna get 10 uses on all of my foundations this year. I do like that this is a squeeze bottle. It's, you know, it's pretty nice and really honestly don't need very much product at all. And I do prefer this one applied with a sponge, but what I do first is kind of apply it with the fingers and spread it out in terms of the coverage that I want, and then go in and blend with the sponge. But as you can see, this stuff goes a very long way. And especially for someone like myself that likes a little bit of a lighter coverage. It's a very interesting formula. And if you do have oily skin, I definitely think that you might like this one. And it is quite long lasting as well. The melasma over my upper lip is absolutely annoying me right now. It's just been very hard to cover these last few weeks of summer. It's just been hard to kind of mask that without having kind of a cakey upper lip look. And this does have quite a quick dry down. So you do kind of want to work in sections quickly if you're applying it this way. So even we did the whole face and there's still a little bit of product left. I am currently using my L'Oreal True Match Radiant Serum Concealer. I have the shade N3, light medium. I would not say this is a light medium shade, however, so keep that in mind. But it is quite a nice concealer. It's very thin and it's also in my Project 10 uses. Look how brightening that is, holy moly. And I've just been liking lately to spread the product out with a brush first and then go in with my sponge to blend. And I've really been pushing that concealer into this innermost cavern of the eye. Again, I just feel like it wakes me up <laughs> in terms of looks anyways. This is a good solid medium coverage concealer, I would say. Mine's a little on the light side for me right now, but as for the rest of the time, it does really well. And I want to see you to see here that the skin is really, it's not tacky or anything, um, but I am going to use just a tiny bit of powder, I think, today. Starting with the under eye, I'm going to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder to set under the eye. I just like to tap out the creases a little bit beautiful that looks nice together the two the l'oreal and the 
Charlotte Tilbury, very smooth. One thing that I did roll into my project yesterday was my Tower 28 Bronzino in the shade West Coast. This is something I don't use much at all. I wanna try it with this technique that I've been using with other cream bronzers, and that is to pick it up with a metal spatula and then apply it to the back of my hand first. Kind of spread it out and then go in with my new favorite brush for all creams, which is the NYX, I think it's a foundation brush. Anyways, I just wanna see if I can make use out of this Bronzino before summer is gone. Ooh, yeah, I see, I really like it like this. I feel like it's easier for me to get some on my brush without going crazy with it. If you have a little metal spatula, you could use the end of a brush, like an eyeshadow brush or something to pull out a little product and spread it on the back of your hand. So I did pull this into Project 10 Uses because I just wanted to see, you know, if I could get some good use out of this before it goes off because it's my oldest Tower 28 product. I don't even remember if they had the blushes at the time that this launched and I picked it up. It's quite shimmery and that's part of why I really haven't used it much. But I feel like in this application, it doesn't look so heavy as it has in the past when I've used it with a sponge or just dipping my brush straight into the packaging. So a little tip for you. I mean, I kind of discovered that because of my makeup courses that I've been taking, but I can kind of smell that it's, you know, starting to get to a place where it might not be good anymore. So I just wanted to get some use on it, see if it would be something that I would be interested in panning in its entirety. All right, now we can set. And I think honestly, because I'm wearing the face bond today and I really don't need a ton of powder, I'm gonna just go in with my Charlotte Tilbury here and just lightly set the face. I think I wanna start for powder bronzer with my Fenty Beauty Sunstalker bronzer i am working to hit pan on this it is just a matte bronzer it's a little bit lighter than some of my other bronzers so i do like it especially layered over other bronzers and i think the matte quality of this bronzer will help a little bit in terms of balancing the bronzino and i've also been using this product a lot as a transition shade in my eyeshadow looks and i should probably decide pretty quickly here what eyeshadow palette i'm going to use so i know what kind of blush i want to use but maybe i'll just go neutral don't forget to bronze your ears All right, and then one thing I know I talked about in my Naked palette video with the three plus looks, I know I talked about how I use a bare brush to blend eyeshadows and that I've learned that in my makeup courses and that that really helps. I also mentioned that I do that with face steps and that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. I just take the brush that I used for powder typically and just very lightly, I'm very, I'm not, I'm hardly touching the skin at all and just blend it and that helps so much. Okay. For highlighter, I want to go into my Becca Opal Deluxe Sample. I am really hoping to use this up by the end of the year, so I am trying to use it more this what's left of this summer and into fall because it can be a little dark for my skin in the cooler months. But it is such a beautiful highlighter. I don't know if you guys remember the video or not, but I had done kind of a search for a dupe for this highlighter because I was working on using it up, I think maybe last year in 2023 is when I did that video. I definitely feel like 
this shade is dupable. And I wiped off my brush, so now I'm just kind of blending and buffing those pearls into the skin. All right, for deck of panning this month, I chose to put in my MAC Warm Soul blush. This is the mineralized blush and I have it in for five uses. So this is going to be look or use rather number two. I'm going to start this on the apple of my cheek and then work it back just because this is like a little bit more of a sun burning shade. Blend it in with the bronzer. Look at that glow. Holy cow. I do really like this blush. I believe I received this in PR in 2023. It was either 2023 or very early on this year. And it also has like a strong golden glow to it. So, I mean, like I said, it's glowing, that's for sure. Little on the chins. And across this part of the forehead, I like to go right here on the nose. I'm gonna pop off of here and do some eyeshadow primer and my brows. I don't have either one of those types of products in my project pans. And then when I come back, we're going to use my Project Level Up palette and maybe some other shades from other palettes too. We'll see. And so I'll be right back. All right, we are back and glowy as hell. <laughs> so I decided today we're going to go ahead and again, play with my Project Level Up palette, which is the BH Cosmetics Avocado Toast palette. I am going to start off, however, with my Fenty Beauty bronzer uh, for a transition and kind of to set down my primer from crease toward the brow. How are you all doing? It's been a busy couple of weeks getting ready for my daughter to start her junior year of high school, which this is her first full week. For whatever reason, they always like to start them on a Thursday and Friday, which I think is just weird. She has a couple of musical and play auditions coming up. Last year she decided she was a theater kid and I couldn't be more excited for her. I did very minimal like theater type things but I did love performing at her age. I was in choir and stuff like that too so I, unlike my daughter, was not brave enough <laughs> to do like a lot of auditions and things like that. I feel a little behind on my makeup courses, but I am going to be bringing to you soon the natural makeup application that I promised you guys. I just wasn't quite there today to do it, but I will get that filmed very soon for you guys and get that up because I know a lot of you were excited. And then I'm going to take my little thick smudgy brush here which I love for the lower lash line and just put a good amount of this under. I feel like it just makes this eye look more open and awake too. And I am so close to hitting pan on this bronzer. And then I'm just going to take my bare brush here and Make sure that transition is blended on both top and bottom. Let's get to the fun part here. I want to put superfood in my crease here. That sounds like a good plan. I'm going to go in with a pinched fluffy so that I can have this, you know, lower down in the crease. But I am going to start it just a little bit on the outer part of the lid, which will give our deepest shade kind of something to blend into as well. I really like this shade. It's kind of a mossy slash army green color. It's blending into the transition pretty well. It's been a minute since I used this palette, but I do love it. I did a while ago a one month, one palette with this palette. That was a lot of fun and it, I, I learned a lot about myself, about my makeup usage, about this palette, obviously in particular. It was just a lot of fun. If I wasn't doing projects like No Pan Left Behind and whatnot, I could definitely see doing something like that again. It was so enlightening. <laughs> it really was. It was very enlightening 
to do a project like that and I would definitely be willing to do that again in the future. So if you don't know for this palette, if you don't watch that project of mine, I am on level three of project level up. That means I have to use every shade in this palette three times and hit three pans, which, you know, not easy. I think I'll be on this level for a little bit, but I do feel good about my decision to hand pick my palettes for that project just so that it's more seasonally relevant because I would have a really time reaching a really hard time reaching, let's say, for a pastel palette in the fall. So then I'm just not going to be successful. It's going to slow me down in my progress overall. And so, you know, that's why I started handpicking my palettes for Project Level Up. And I'm glad I did because this pro uh, this palette is going to be, be absolutely beautiful for fall, for the rest of summer here. I mean, fall is still, I think, a month away. Yeah, almost exactly a month away at this point. Now, I would like to put the shade Pit right here this deeper brown on outer corner outer part of the lid i think i'm going to go in with this fluffy brush here and then just really concentrate on blending it on the outer corner but not really worry too much about the blending because again we're going to go in with that bare brush it's almost to me a bit it's got a bit of plumminess to it i don't know because even when i or maybe more burgundy something about this is quite unique it's definitely a staple color for me in this palette for deepening things up obviously we do have a black in here as well predictions for shades i might hit pan on i could see hitting pan in avocado and lemon pepper lemon pepper i would venture to say that I'm quite close to hitting pan, and I do think I'm gonna use that shade today because it's just one of my favorites, and I want to share it with you. So I think for the center of the lid, I'm gonna go in with the shade Haas right here. This is really pretty. It's kind of like the shimmery version of what I put in, in the crease, kind of a shimmer, shimmery army green shade, and definitely just a great mid-tone shimmer to include in the look. And I'm just lightly patting that over that outer edge. We don't want to completely cover the mattes. For the inner part of the lid, our highlighting shade is going to be this lemon pepper shade. Let me swatch it for you. Definitely my favorite shade in the palette. It's kind of a duochrome. It's got a similar base color, but very, very light to paprika. It's almost got like this undertone of like a terracotta shade. I'm going to apply this to the inner lid. In terms of my last palette that I had in Project Level Up, I honestly was completely wrong bringing a little bit of this up into the crease just to give things a little bit of a lift. I was completely wrong about the shades that I thought I might hit pan on. So who knows? Who really knows? So just blended that in with the deep green. Look how pretty that is. But I will say that lemon pepper does have the sort of deepest dip in it so far. Quick lower lash line here. I'm gonna take this little pencil brush here and go into Superfood and do a matte lower lash line today. Just a little bit on the outer part of the lower lash line and then I'll use my little smudge brush that I originally used to, for the lower lash line. I use that just to blend. And then I think I might do inner corner with avocado here. So I'm gonna take my other little wispy brush here. Avocado is quite a, a lightly pressed sort of shimmer. One of the more lighter pressed ones in this palette. So I definitely think there's a possibility for pan in that one as well. Okay, well, 
We used 10,000 brushes, but we got a really beautiful look here. This is the NYX Epic Wear Liner Stick in the shade Deepest Brown. It is my favorite brown eyeliner. It's cool toned, it's dark, but most importantly, it stays <laughs> in the upper waterline or as I tight line, it does not transfer to my lower inner rim. Okay, I'm going to quickly apply some L'Oreal Telescopic. I'll speed through this part. Random thought, but I just, um, I decluttered my lippies yesterday. It was long overdue. I was able to get rid of 15 products and now, all of my lip products fit in my little three tall Sterilite drawers. My daughter did make me, not make me, heavily impression me to take and put my lifter glasses back on my shelf because, you know, they look cute there. So I did do that, but I feel good knowing that everything fits in there. Project Pen Lips. Starting with my lippy pencil from ColourPop in the shade BFF2, I'm going to line and mostly fill in my lips. Beautiful. I'm gonna do just a light blot there. Make sure I don't have too much product. Okay, so the lip liner was from my year long project. And this one is in my deck of painting currently for the newest purchase in my collection. And it is the L'Oreal Color Riche Lipstick in the shade Organza. I recently saw this on someone's channel. It's a frost lipstick. And that is definitely coming back in along with 90s browns. So this was kind of the perfect thing. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in the center of the lips. And then I'm gonna press over, kind of blend. And tell me that is not just gorgeous. I want a little more. Mm, 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 mm. So what do we think? Yes, I look a little shiny. Let's do something about that. Take a little bit of my Charlotte Tilbury powder and press this in the T-zone area, specifically where I don't want to be too glowy. Hair is not dried yet, so I'm not gonna do too much with that, but what do we think of this look? Using all Project Pan makeup, I'm very happy with this. This is why I'm able to be so hyper-focused on my Project Panning, because I'm constantly cycling through products, both new and old, and just having a lot of fun with my makeup. I hope you guys also had fun today. I love just chatting with you guys about project panning, about makeup, about life. What's going on in your life right now? Are you doing okay? Just checking in with you. I thank you guys so much for always showing up for me. I appreciate it more than I could ever say, but I do really appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend a few minutes with me here at my vanity and I had a great time and I love this look. I'll be happily sporting this look for the rest of the day. I hope you guys are having a great week so far and I hope all of your makeup days are absolutely beautiful makeup days and I will see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye.